Dude, we gotta stop, check it out. We shattered the bearing. If we keep going, this truss is gonna end up on the ground, man. Hey gang, welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, you saw Jordan, Rad, and I put up our sheathing on all four sides of our garage build. We used the zip system and it looks great. And check it out, that thing is green and it's massive. But no, we're not at Fenway Park. We're at the Stud Pack Dream House Build. And just like in all our other videos on this series, it is plus 100 degrees today and the zip has provided a lot of shade and check out Rad. Rad, how's the shade in there? Loving it. You're loving it? Well, you're not gonna be loving it today because the three of us are actually gonna be 30 feet closer to the sun, way up there installing our trusses. And we got some pretty wild stuff planned for this video. But before we start on our trusses, the whole stud pack team got a special invitation from BFS, Builders First Source. We're actually gonna go down and see our trusses being manufactured today. So let's hop in the truck, head down there, and take a factory tour, which I love. All right, guys, we are at the BFS Trust Production Facility right off of I-45 in Conroe, Texas. I never knew this place existed. This is amazing. Thank you. Can y'all kind of walk me through what's going on here? So all the lumber comes off this belt? That's correct. This is the CDS. That's where we, uh, the lumber, the ranger, pick up the lumber, carries it to the CDS, and then it cuts it, and then brings the lumber over here brings it to this rail and then just pull it up so we can get ready to build. And that's all computer control, all the saws and everything, right? Yes, sir, absolutely, yeah. And then check it out, guys. You can actually see our trusses being made right here on this table. And they're right up here on the overhead screen so the guys know exactly what they gotta do. That is awesome. So I imagine the first thing they gotta do is, is set all these stops. That's like their form, right? Yes, correct. The table, it automatically reads the computer, you know, the computer reads it. What, and really? They, yeah, the plugs, they move. That's how they know where they set up the, the lumber. And now they just shoot it with staples shoot to with hold staples. it together, and then they'll put in the dog. plates. Yeah, the truss plates. Truss plates. Okay. Truss plates, yes, sir. Yeah. We pick it up, as you can see. Yep. He puts the bottom one, then he puts the top one. All right. When that's done, the finish press comes in. Presses them. Presses it all together. Yes, sir. Once that's complete, we lift up the, we lift up this, the wizard, this is the wizard table. We lift it up, it falls through the rails over there and it does the final press and then they come out at the, at the end. What's the biggest truss you can make right here? Up to 60 feet, the biggest truss, up to 60 feet. That's 60. huge. So you're about ready for this in just a minute, right? This yes, as soon as, yes sir, as soon as he's done with the plates, installing them, we're gonna see it run through. Oh, they're gonna press it? Yeah, cool. they're gonna press it, yeah. Look at that. Man. There Just you like go. That. Just like that. Yes, sir. Easy. That would have taken us a week to do it that. Up. <laughs> they're going to lift it up and just going to slide to do the oh. final press. All right. Which is this one. Oh, it gets one more. One more. Yeah, right. the last press, the final press. There it goes. Final press, make sure it's nice and tight and uh -huh. holding. Does your wife ever ask you, like, can you bring the sheets over here and, and iron them for me on these things? Yeah, well, sometimes she does. You know, it's quicker <laughs> to do them. <laughs> it is quick. I would love to see the saw. Can we see it? Absolutely. Let's go and check then, it uh, out. All right, here's the computer-controlled saw. Let's go check it out. So you have all the different lengths of 2 by 4 out here, and the robot just yeah. one up. This is called the Ranger. This one detects the lumber once the computer is uh, programmed. It detects which lumber to pick. It picks it and brings it here, slides it to this blade saw, and cuts it with the angle. And then all the sawdust and scraps yeah. falls down there. Yes, yeah, sir. It goes down there. The bin. Takes it to that bin. And once it's full, we take it out and we replace it. But yes, it all, the scrap goes there. Well, Steve and Silvio, we super appreciate y'all showing us the tour. It was awesome seeing our trusses made back there. Can't wait to put them on the roof. Really appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Have a good one. Thank Gracias. you very much. Gracias. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Yes, right. sir. Have a good one. Thank you. Be good. All right. Yesterday, we took a tour of the factory to see the roof trusses being built for the Stud Pack Dream House. And check it out. Today, they showed up. Check it out guys, our trusses are on site. Now right on top, we have two gable end trusses. This is a very simple roof. These gable end trusses, you're gonna have one on the back 
and one on the front. These vertical two by fours are the nailers for our zip sheathings. Remember in the previous video, we said the zip sheathing is gonna go all the way up and we're gonna tie the roof structure to our second floor framing, just like we use the zip to attach the second floor framing to the first floor framing. So that's what all these nailers are for. And below the gable end trusses are almost 20 parallel cord trusses. This is called the heel. It's almost two feet high. And a little fun fact, gang, up until about a week ago, this was not our roof. The original plans called for three beams up there that held up some little triangular trusses. And then from those triangular trusses to a massive ridge beam, which is actually on site already. So we're gonna return that. And it was conventional framing like two by sixes from the trusses to the ridge beam. I know it sounds complicated. That's because it is complicated. So we made the decision to make it very simple. We called up the team at BFS and said, hey, can you guys make this simple and we can just do one truss all the way across the building? They said, absolutely, that's gonna make it easier on our end as well. So that's what we did and that's why we have these trusses right here. But like I said earlier, it's 100 degrees out here and we gotta get to work. But how are we gonna get them up there? Well, I don't see a crane on this job site, but we got some rope. No. Seriously, gang, we're gonna pull it up with a rope. Now we're gonna be doing what I call some balls to the wall building in this video, but rest assured, we're gonna be doing it safe at all times. And we thought this would be a great time to let you guys know about our secret weapon. Well, it's Rad. So what you may or may not know about Rad, he's actually my son-in-law, Jordan's brother-in-law. And he grew up in Kauai, jumping off of cliffs and waterfalls. Then he went to stunt school in Australia and wound up in California, playing the role of Mariner at the Waterworld show at Universal Studios. Isn't that right, bud? Oh yeah. <laughs> so all that to say, and some of you have already picked up on it in the comments, Brad is very comfortable with flipping, jumping, balancing. Air awareness. Uh, yeah. Climbing. Falling, climbing. Yeah. He you walks on these it. rafters like a goat and falling, <laughs> but we're not gonna be doing any falling, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so he's itching to get up there. Let's go build some scaffolding. All right, gang, where I am standing on this Advantech is 11 foot above the dirt downstairs. And the top of that scaffolding, 35 feet in the air. But don't worry, none of us are afraid of heights. And Rad, he was jumping off stuff higher than that when he was four years old. So let's head downstairs and get a game plan. All right, guys, here's our plan. We're gonna take one of the gable end trusses. We're gonna carry it around to the back of the building and lift it up from the back and install it. Then we're gonna work on the parallel cord trusses work our way forward to the street from this side and end up with our last gable end truss. So let's pop these straps, carry this thing to the back. It's gonna give us an idea for how much it weighs and then we can lift it up to the roof. All right, guys, we're all rigged up. Let me show you what we're doing. We got a two inch strap here on our truss, the two points. Rad tied a figure eight climber's knot right there. We got a big old rope all the way up over the scaffold where Rad is. He's gonna pull, Jordan's gonna yeah. pull. They think this is gonna work. I have serious doubts. You ready, guys? Sure. Yeah, let's try it. All right, count it down, Rad. All right, three, two, one. All right, try again. How y'all doing? Oh, thing does not want to budge. <laughs> All right, guys. Plan B. Let's go get something. What you got in mind? I'll show you at the store. <laughs> All right, guys. Here's what we got. We went to our tractor supply and basically raided their hardware section. It was kind of a long trip because it was one of those deals where all the employees came over and said, what the heck are you guys working on? So we got ourselves a hand winch, some 3 16 cable and all this hardware. I think what I want to do, gang, let's rig this up and try it. And then we'll come back and we'll show you if it works or not. All right, guys, we made everything up. Let me walk you through it. We got our not for lifting humans winch right here, rated at 1100 pounds. We got it bolted to our scaffolding through one of the rungs with a U-bolt so it can't go up and it can't go down. We used the plywood because we ran out of threads 
and it's just acting as a spacer. But I like that, it makes it more solid, right? Yep. The whole winch is against the plywood, not against this pipe. Cable goes all the way up to where Rad is. We got a pulley up there chained to the top rail. Then we're coming all the way back down and we have a clevis or a shackle through our strap, which is attached to our truss. I call that a shackle, but at the store, they called it a clevis. What do you guys call it? Let me know in the comments, because this is one of them things where the debate is never going to be settled. So you may be wondering, what happens if this scaffolding tips over? Is it going to tip? Is it going to go through this wall, bring this wall down into Jordan's backyard, along with our brand new scaffolding? Well, three of my brothers are engineers, so I sent them a sketch of this, and they said this will hold more than 1,700 pounds, so we're good to go. But, that's great, that's great news. That is great news, but there's always a but with engineers, right? They said, don't do it, you're in a crane. <laughs> so uh, why don't you just say it right now, sorry uncles. Sorry uncles. All right, let's try this guys. <laughs> All right dad, something yeah, like probably. here we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, hit my head on the brace. These brims, you can't see stuff like that, right? right. You just crash into right. it. All right, here we go. All right. The right way. How's it looking, Mr. Stuntman? And we're off. How's it feel? That's pretty quick. So easy, yeah. so easy. Yeah. All right, Bob. We got this all day, huh? All day. Yeah. It does get a little tiring. Good. I noticed y'all gave me the heavy one. No, it's personal now. I like this. All right, what you right think? There. Are we just gonna, gonna like swing back and hit the scaffolding? Do you want me to hold it up there? Rad's gonna get up there and do some stuntman stuff. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna keep the uh, the gable end from crashing against the scaffolding when it clears this outer wall. You good? Yeah. Good job. Nice. That's impressive. Now what? All right, guys, our gable end truss is installed. Six inch structural screws attaching it to the double top plates. That thing's not going anywhere. We also have it braced off. And we also are gonna diagonally brace it before we leave here tonight. It's awesome seeing that thing finally in the sky. So now we're gonna put up the parallel cord trusses. We gotta lay it out. 16 inches on center and uh, couldn't be any easier. Our studs are also 16 inch on center. And it just so happens, not really, we plan it this way, that the trusses lined up on the studs for ultimate strength. I've already got these done. You reach behind me, mark out 48, 64, 80, 96. You know what I keep thinking about? This is fun, putting these up, but now we gotta sheathe it. Look how high that is. That's that gonna is, be fun though. That is gonna be fun. Yeah. Can't wait. Let me mark these with the square and we'll keep going. All right guys, all our trusses are laid out on both top plates on each side of the building. So now we're gonna bring the scaffold over there, lift up our parallel cord trusses, roll them in the middle, set them down. Brad's gonna take a ride. You ready, bud? Roll it off the edge. All right, yeah, just, just 
Throw me over. Throw me over the wall. All right, guys, Rad is rigging up one of our parallel cord trusses and he's grabbing it by the middle. The trusses came with all kind of paperwork on how to rig them, how to support them, how to brace them, how to load them. On this truss, we can grab it from the middle, but you'll notice on the gable end truss, we had to grab it out further away from the middle. So that's why we did it that way. And that's why we're doing it different on this one. You got it rigged, bud? Pretty much. All right, let's lift her up. See if the other part of our plan works. Steer this thing around and set it in place on that side of the building. <laughs> I was just, it looks so funny. Hey gang, it is the next day and check it out. We got three trusses up and the roof is looking awesome. But yesterday was our planning day. Sometimes you gotta have those, right? We figured out we're gonna lift it with the scaffolding with a hand winch that we picked up from Tractor Supply. And that winch costs like 150 bucks and it enables us to safely and securely raise the truss up and then lower it manually right on our marks, safe and secure, love that. And the other thing is it's saving Jordan a ton of money. If we'd have rented a crane, it'd have been well over $1,000 and his funds on this project are not unlimited. So I'm happy to save all that money for you, bud. Thank you. But today's goal is to set the remainder of the trusses or as many as we can get. But we're kind of struggling a little bit and we've had a lot of comments about it. You guys need tool bags. So UPS showed up this morning and I think there's something pretty special in that box right there. Let's open it up. All right, here we go, guys. No more throwing hammers, no more sharing tape measures. We're gonna each be able to carry our tools on board. Nice. We've got this huge box from Diamondback Tools. They were gonna send us three tool bags, but it looks like they sent us a lot more. Look at all this. Whoa. These pouches, that'll be great. We could put our screws in there, hoist them up on the scaffold. Brad can do that. Another big bag. Oh, check it oh, out, man. Cool. Look at that. It's Brad, Jordan. Yeah. Thank you. Let's put them on right now. This is awesome. Yeah, cool. So let's take everything out of the box. We'll spread it out on our zip table here and see how it looks. All right, guys, check it out. I got my bag on, Rad's all kitted out, yeah. and so is Jordan. But we do need some more tools, but now I know what to get them for Christmas and their birthdays for like a few years now, right? <laughs> but look at what they sent us. This is unbelievable. Got all these little kits with pencils, a Sharpie, and notepads. So no more writing notes on a piece of uh, plywood. <laughs> We got a uh, flat bar holder, which I haven't put mine on yet. These awesome pin lights, all kind of bags, totes, and pouches. These are cool. You can clip it on anywhere you want. Brad's got his in the back. Yeah, let's see. Got yep. the water bottle. Got the water in there. And with a little drawstring, so if you've got it full of screws, you can keep that closed and they won't all fall out. So a huge thank you to Diamondback Tool Bags for setting us up with three complete bags and all this other swag. Super appreciate it. Give them a big W Diamondback in the comment section below. But for right now, let's get our tools on our belts, head upstairs, hang some trusses. All right, guys, we're back upstairs. Got our tool belts, got them kitted out, ready to work. Got our 30 foot scaffolding rigged up, ready to lift our next truss. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift one more, maybe two. We're gonna set a couple more, attach them to our braces. Then we're gonna come back and show you our system. So let's head downstairs, rig up that other truss and haul it up here. All right, guys, here's our process A to Z getting the trusses on the dirt down here at street level all the way up there on the second floor on our double top now at the factory they pin them all together with a nail so we're going to remove that nail first and pull it so it doesn't kill anybody right i keep doing this 30 years of doing that and now i got to change habits but i love that all right i'm gonna pull the other nail and then jordan and i are going to carry it over there
and we bring it to Rad, and he's already up there, ready to rig it. So these trusses, you can actually lift them in one spot, but hey, we got it. So we're gonna go for two spots. Wrap it around both sides. Easiest way we found out to rig it is just tie each knob to itself. Bang a ring. All right, we're ready to pull. So I'm gonna finish cranking it as Rad heads up to the top of the scaffolding because he's gonna guide that thing as we spin it around along with the truss. And now we're gonna unlock the wheels and roll the truss into place. Now we're gonna lower the hoist and set the truss on our marks on the top plate. You ready, Red? Yes, sir. Whenever you're ready. All right, guys, I'm on layout. I'm flush with the outside of our top plates and I got a six inch screw already started right here. I'm gonna drive it home. All right, we'll go catch the other side, dial in our block at the top and this one's temporarily set. And while dad's over here on this exterior wall, getting that truss dialed in, Rad's on the top, getting the two by four brace locked in to our two by four truss. We're gonna give you guys more information on that two by four up there in just a second. But for right now, let's get this thing strapped in. All right guys, the heel of my truss right here is not flush with my top plates. I'm about an eighth of an inch short. So we got our favorite little trick, the screw and the crowbar. Pry it like that, drive that screw, we're home free. Now I put the winch in freewheel, and Rad can pull it down and lower it. All right, gent man, I'm gonna hand this over to you. Sure. Let these guys see what's going on out there. Would you mind getting my battery down there? It's on the charger. Sure. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. But now we're swinging to the rack because we're free. Ready? Yep. Look at these guys watching us. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Looks great. We dancing, we dancing. All right, yeah, you're good, turn. Perfect. Nice. I can see my house from here.
All right. All right, gang, it is the next day. And as you can see yesterday, we got about two thirds of the trusses in place and it looks awesome. We nailed our little plan, it's working great. But now we got a little problem. We can no longer lift the truss up on the outside of the building and spin our scaffolding because we're gonna crash into the trusses we've already installed. So here's the plan we came up with. You can already see we've lifted a truss and we put it in place right here, put a screw in it so it won't tip over and we got a brace on the other side. So there's six more of these down on the ground. We're gonna lift them up one at a time and just stack them right here, putting a screw to hold it in place temporarily, right? Then all that's left is the gable end, the big boy down there. So that's gonna be our last lift. We're gonna reach over and lift it, and then we're gonna set it in place and attach it to this wall right here, just like we did on the other side of the building. Once that is done, we'll take down the top two sections of scaffolding that way the scaffold will roll beneath our trusses. And they're only 165 pounds, so the three of us can manhandle them. Have Jordan on one side, right up there, me over here, and we just set them on our top plates. We'll definitely put a block out there so it doesn't tip out. Should be easy, sounds like a great plan. Let's see if we can pull it off. All right, gang, we have two more trusses left and our winch decided to give up the ship. Here are the parts of the bearing and that bearing was between this pin and the housing over here on the crank side. And since that bearing, it's really a spacer in my opinion, is gone, there's all this slop in this pin. Check it out. Can you see that moving right there? There you go. And because we have all the slop, the teeth aren't fully engaged and the whole thing's slipping. We're not comfortable, keep using it. So we're gonna take it back to the store and get another one. All right, guys, we're back from the store. A quick fix. We got the $7 upgrade. The winch that broke was rated at 1,100 pounds lifting capacity. This one's rated at 1,400. Put some grease on there. We're good to go. Jordan, are you ready to get the roof on this house? I'm ready. Let's do it. Touchdown. That was literally the last one we could fit up here between the building and the scaffold. Nice job, everybody. Last trust, we've come full circle, baby. All right, we decided to put these two by fours on now, so when we lift the truss, it won't swing too far. This will go against the existing framing and make it flush to our wall. We just gotta position it this way, screw it down. You ready there, stunt man? Let's do it. <laughs> Nice guys, Put, look, look at me. I'm still going in the back, 30 years of habit. All right, the big gable end is installed and all the trusses that were on the ground are now sitting right here. Now if the sun is going down, we got like an hour to set them. We gotta finish tonight, because tomorrow Jordan and I are on the road to Dallas because we're gonna be on Roger Wakefield's live show. So let's put on our tool belts guys, and get these trusses up. So as you can see, we moved our scaffolding. I got one section over here for me. Rad's on top of these two, and we got a section over there for Jordan. So Jordan and Rad are gonna get that truss lifted up, get it airborne, and then all three of us are gonna grab it and walk it into place. Screw coming out. I'm lifting up in three, two, one. All right. All right, uh, one more foot. Good. All right, I'm getting up on my top plate. Lifting in three, two, one. I'm on. Yeah, don't let the screw 
screws beat you. We're working late, man. You're driving me hard. This is tough. <laughs> yeah. You're flipping the jury on me? <laughs> Two, three. Whoa, who's pushing? Cool. Cool view, huh, guys? Why don't you just want to do yours? Jenny, don't want to fight. All right, guys, that came out awesome. As you can see, all the trusses are installed and I put up diagonal bracing this morning to keep it really strong and keep it on layout. So when we're up there crawling on that roof, it's not moving around on us because they're pretty flimsy this way. But to me, that was one of the major hurdles of this project simply because it was so high in the air and we had never installed trusses before. But I love the way it came out. We're super stoked about the roof system being on. And this structure is basically complete except for a couple of bathroom walls over there. That's easy. And of course, we got to do the back porch. That's going to be pretty easy as well. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Stud Pack Official. Get yourself a hoist, lift up that like button, smash it for us. Please subscribe, drop a comment, and we'll see you on the very next Stud Pack video.